In this tutorial, we're gonna make a div fill the height of the remaining screen space. Okay, so I have a simple example here. I just have an HTML boilerplate and in here we have two elements, a header and a main, right? So this is uh, very typical because if you have some kind of web app layout, usually you wanna have a header and then you wanna have the main take up everything else. So I've selected them here in my CSS and I've given them background colors. Now, when you do this, you won't actually see anything yet because these elements don't have any height. These are block level elements, header and main, so they automatically take up 100% of the width, but they don't have any height yet. They don't have any content, right? And also we have not set a height, so they don't have any height. And right, so they only have 100% width, but no height. And that's why we don't see anything yet. Now, typically you're gonna give the header a particular height of let's say 60 pixels. It may also be because it has some content, but usually you set a height, a fixed height on a header. And so what you get is something like this. Let me make it a little bit bigger. Right, so now the header takes up the entire width because it's a block level element and it gets 60 pixels of height. Right, so now it actually has some size and we see the background color. Now the first weird thing that we see here is that it has some weird space around it. And this is actually the body element. So the browser applies some default styling to a lot of elements on the page. And one of those elements is gonna be the body element. So, so typically people remove this by selecting all elements with the universal selector. And we just wanna remove all of that default styling. So we can say margin zero, padding zero. And typically people also set the box sizing property to border box. This is actually very advanced. Most developers don't really understand this one. Um, I have a video on this, check it out. But basically this means if you set a height or width on an element, that's gonna be the total size, including any padding and border. So if I save here, you can see that weird space is gone. So this is a very typical CSS reset. Okay, so now we have the header um, at 60 pixels, right? And now we want the main to take up everything else. So how do we do that? Well, the best solution is really to use Flexbox. So you wanna identify the parent element, right? So here we have the main, the parent element is the body, right? If, if, if all of this is sitting in a container, right? Some of you may have something like this, container element. In that case, the parent element of the main is this container, right? So you need to identify the parent element and then you need to select the parent element. For me here, that's body, right? Body is just an HTML element. Like any other element, you can select it and style it, right? I could give it a class to be consistent, but for body, I usually just select by tag. So then we're gonna make this the flex container as it's called. So just say display flex. Um, and when you do that, this becomes the flex container and it's direct child elements automatically become the flex items. And now we have unlocked the flexbox functionalities. Okay, now when you do that, the child elements are gonna be the flex items and they're gonna be laid out horizontally on the row. That's the default layout in Flexbox. We don't want that. We want the header to be on top of the main. So we wanna keep that vertical flow. So we're going to change the flex direction from the default, which is row, to column, right? We, we still wanna have that vertical layout. So let's see what we get, right? So now it, it's still the same. So now you could say nothing has changed, but that's not true because now we can use uh, one of the features for flex items. This main is now a flex item. We can basically tell it, we can assign a portion of the available space, right? So the header is taking up 60 pixels and now we have all of this available space and we can tell the flex items. In this case, only this one is gonna be competing for that available space. By using the flex property, this is actually a shorthand. And if you use a number here, that's gonna be the, the portion of the available space that it's gonna take up. And since this is the only one competing for that available space, it's gonna take up everything. And actually what you do need to make sure here is that um, it's gonna take up all the available space in, the, in its parent elements, right? So in the flex container. So the flex container itself does need to stretch all the way to the bottom, right? So typically what you want to do is set a height of 100% of the viewport height. And when you do that, um, well, it's gonna take up all the available space. Now, if you have a lot of content in here and you wanna have a scroll bar eventually, it's better to set a min height here. So the body is gonna be at least as big as the viewport, right? This is called the viewport. It does not include the address bar, this browser stuff. It only includes this visible area of the web page. And for here it will look the same, but this is typically what you want. If you have a lot of content in the main, and you wanna have some, some scrollable, more like a typical website. If you have a web app type of layout and you don't wanna have scrolling like that, 
um, you can just use height 100% of the viewport height, right? So it's really important that you that you have mastered CSS as a front end or full stack developer. And it doesn't take that long, um, just a couple of hours, and it's going to benefit you for the rest of your career. So definitely check out my professional CSS course if you really want to take your CSS to that advanced level. Um, it's just a couple of hours and you walk away with much more clarity and much more um, expertise and experience. So definitely check it out the link is in the description all right and this also works if you add a footer here by the way all right so we could add other things here like a footer and let's see i could say footer i'll give it a background color of uh, pure black and typically a footer also has a a set height let's say 40 pixels right and when we do that um the height the the footer gets 40 pixels of height the header still has 60 pixels of height and then there is all the available space in between there right and this is the only element competing for that available space right we assign a portion to this element well it's the only element that gets a portion assigned and so the browser is just going to make this one take up everything by the way if this was helpful i'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe also check out my courses on css and javascript if you want to take those skills to an advanced level because in there we will build some beautiful real world projects from scratch so you can see how everything fits together and really master css or javascript and i will also release other courses soon like react and node.js so if you want to be notified then make sure you are subscribed to the email newsletter you can find the link in the description thanks for watching and i hope to see you soon